Hi, everyone, and happy Tuesday. Thank you all so much for joining us for today's amazing Lunch and Learn. We have an incredible guest for you today. I'm so excited to geek out with her because this isn't something we've usually talked about, a topic that you know other guests have been on, or even our rapid fire end of quarter shows. No one's really talked about these subjects before. So I'm so pumped. I'm thrilled that she's here. Um, but before we get to our amazing guest, I just want to say welcome to everyone that that's new to the group, I want you to know this is a safe place for you guys to ask questions, um, collaborate, all that fun stuff, because there's a lot going on right now and there's always a lot going on in social media. And so we wanna just help build this family and community and support each other during this time. And we'll be sharing social media news, but if you have specific questions about anything, make sure to ask it in the group because there's probably at least a couple of people that could help answer that question for you. So welcome everyone. And if you're watching us live, let us know who you are, where you're watching us from and something you're looking forward to this week or in the future. Future. I can't believe we have the less than five months left in this year. I feel like March was obviously really long and now we've just on a high speed train. We're just going for 2021. So let us know something positive or you're excited for, whether it's a project, something personal, anything, we'd love to hear it. And before we bring on our guests, I want to talk about how awesome and just badass she really is. So our incredible guest is Valerie Jennings. She's the CEO and founder of Jennings Social Media and MarTech, which she founded in 2003 at the age of 24, which is amazing. When I was 24, I have no idea what I was doing, but her agency represents small businesses to global clients from animal health to technology and automotive to manufacturing. Recognitions include being named as a Folio Top Woman in Media Honoree DMN National Marketer of the Year 2020 recipient, a DMN 40 Under 40 2018 honoree, Kansas City's Most Wanted 2015 honoree, which I think is awesome, um, and the Most Influential Women in Business Class of 2014. Um, I, I just, you must have a trophy room somewhere, Valerie. Um, but Valerie also regularly participates in speaking engagements that reach young professionals and female youth through underground social and in area schools and chambers. She has supported charities such as Big Brothers Big Sisters of Kansas City, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Kansas City, Pet Partners, Safe Home, City Union Mission, and more. So I don't know, Valerie, how we even got you on the show with that whole lineup and how active you are, but I just want to say a big, huge welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm really excited to be here, and um, I love you guys' enthusiasm for all the nerdy stuff, and it's something that's really near and dear to me. Um, I'm a, a creative at heart, but all of the the data and kind of the geeky stuff really gets me excited. Um, so I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Awesome. Well, yeah, I'm a true data science geek. I love numbers. And um, we talked a little bit prior to this, but I didn't tell you this, Valerie, I almost double majored in math because I, was, I love the geekiness. Did you major in math? Math was not my thing, but I was really into science and um, understanding patterns in data. Um, and so looking at what we can learn from all this technology that is in front of us is what gets me excited. But no, um, I was more in, in the liberal arts category and not like a, a, a huge math fan, but I have, I found my sweet spot between the creative and the data. Oh, I love that. Well, you're, you're still a true geek in all aspects and I love it. It's fantastic. So let's actually get down to it because this is always a short and sweet conversation and we want to get as much time with you as possible. So first, I would love to know if you can maybe break it down. Some people may not know what AI MarTech is, maybe kind of break that down and let us know how you got involved in it. Yeah, no, those are uh, great questions to get us started. So MarTech is just a fancy way of saying marketing technology. And if you're in marketing or using marketing platforms, you've been using MarTech for quite some time. And what I like to explain to people is even your uh, social media scheduling tools like 
Hootsuite, Hootsuite or Sprout Social, um, things like that, those are MarTech platforms. And MarTech kind of gets lumped in with a lot of different um, solutions. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the discussion. Um, but really what MarTech is supposed to do is help you do your job faster with more efficiency, um, get the, the data quicker and, and help automate your tasks. And then at the end of the day, there should be some sort of a payoff um, in your investment in using these tools. It, it is a complicated landscape, um, but if you really know what problems you're trying to solve, there's probably a MarTech tool for you or your business. Um, as far as how I got started, well, I started the business in 2003. And in 2005, we were using social media for clients. And just fast track to today, uh, social media has kind of been the, the super highway, if you will, to all this technology and automation and engaging with our customers and our communities. Um, so MarTech and artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, all of those um, types of categories are part of our digital world that we live in today. So it's really just been a natural progression um, for me to continue down this path. Uh, if we look at just my career history, last year at the end of the year, I also got a certification in an intro, intro to artificial intelligence. Um, we can use AI for a lot of different things today. Um, just talking about self-driving cars, that's an AI um, tool that we use. So I, I took uh, the class and one of the certifications so I could understand how AI is being used across industries and to solve problems and then where AI intersects with marketing, which is really um, in lead generation, advertising, and then with data science. So all of that kind of fits nicely together. Oh, I love that. And I think every business is trying to scale, trying to streamline, make things easier. Um, I know the founders here at Agora Pulse, um, the, the company originally started um, with all their ideas like back in 2001. Um, but we're um, a social media management tool to try and help streamline things. And so which we fall kind of right into the MarTech, which is really exciting um, because we get to geek out with someone who understands um, the importance of it all. Exactly. Yes. And so we would love to know um, how many MarTech platforms are there? I know there's social media management, um, but there's a whole slew of them. Um, if you can maybe break down the different yeah. areas of where so, people can do of that. Of course. So right before the show, I wanted to make sure I gave you guys some of the, the latest insights. And I pulled an article from 2020 from chiefmartech.com. Um, last year, when I checked the same um, tally of how many MarTech tools from the marketplace, we were uh, between Um, MarTech solutions in the marketplace. And it's $121 billion industry today. Uh, and it just keeps growing. So the growth was up about 13% from last year. And to Jennifer's point, there's a lot of different uh, categories for MarTech. And we talked about scheduling, but there's also tools that help you understand your customers better and what their buying behaviors and patterns are. Um, there's tools out there to help you analyze your headlines and your content sentiment. Um, but the fastest growing area is data. And that kind of brings us um, back to this conversation about data is kind of the heart and soul or the bread and butter of organizations today. And your data health is really important. So even if you, for example, wanted to get into artificial intelligence, you would have to start with a really good data program and make sure that you're harvesting clean data um, and have a way to collect that. So the, the kind of if we were going to break down these topics and categories of MarTech and and uh, I don't want to say simplify, but maybe a little bit more organized fashion. Um, there's the awareness stage, right? So now we're we're kind of we're 
speaking marketing specifically. And, and this fits in when we talk about a MarTech stack. And again, that's just a fancy way of saying you have a toolkit of resources at your disposal. There are some out there that are a little bit more all in one that you guys are probably familiar with, like HubSpot, for example. Um, it checks almost all the boxes of content, lead generation, nurturing, um, analytics and reporting, fancy workflows. Um, it can power your website and it's got a lot of apps that fit in with it. Um, it's, it's a nice tool. It requires a, a lot of, um, I would say power. I don't want to say labor, but power behind it because you need people to feed this machine um, to really get the benefit out of it and to really understand the workflows. Um, so this MarTech stack concept, as I said, it starts with awareness. And so if we look at some basic uh, MarTech solutions, well, Google ads, obviously that that's going to help us drive awareness. Um, SEO, organic search engine optimization, is another one. So you have tools out there like Moz that is going to give you some insights and data. Um, and then there's one that I like that I use called um, AREFs, and it's a tool that looks at your SEO health. Um, it tells you what's wrong with your site. And so all this awareness, if you're if you were starting just to build your stack and you wanted to focus on awareness, um, you could literally just go it out on Google and type in MarTech solutions to drive awareness. And there's going to be some that are kind of just, you know, really uh, pretty straightforward. Um, Sprout Social's one. Um, Ad Expresso has some great social media analytics and awareness products. Kloop is one that we've used that is a mobile advertising solution that is powered by AI um, and can really get into what people are engaging with on social media. And then this next stage is, is lead conversion. And so you think about, okay, you're using your awareness to get people to your website. So um, maybe it's some sort of work component. Um, these are also things like lead magnets. So having downloadables on the site or resources on the site, white papers, case studies, recorded webinars, etc. cetera. Um, and landing pages. Again, ton of MarTech solutions out there that will just help you optimize your landing pages or do some A-B testing, email marketing. So if we think of um, some of what those products do. And one that I love um, that we've had success with are automating quizzes. So maybe you have an ad that drives people to take a quiz and then they get results from that quiz. That is a great way to do some lead conversion. Then we move up. I've got two more categories, Jennifer, and I'll wrap this section up. The next one is nurturing. So again, MailChimp, Zoho, um, things like that where you're creating workflows. HubSpot also does that. And last but not least your um your deals and your data analytics and so we like agency analytics as a tool that kind of takes all the data and gets it into one report um moz zoho hubspot those will all do that um some tools just look at social media awareness like sprout and hootsuite the one thing that i will caution everybody on is make sure if you're going to use any sort of automated reporting tool um, to measure your social media engagement that you also check the numbers against the channels. So Facebook has Facebook insights. So compare your data to Facebook insights versus your new automation reporting tool. Um, I've seen a lot of just disconnects and what is coming from the channel itself versus what the automation tool is detecting. And so you really want to make sure that your data is is clean um, and that all of that, all of the numbers are accurate. So just take the extra step and don't assume that it's going to just be 100% um, automated. You're done and can move on. So really, really check the work because these are new tools in the marketplace and they're not perfect. And so as marketers, we still have to monitor those tools. So those are the different stages for a stack. 
um, and in a, just a fancy way of looking at a, a holistic a digital strategy and marketing program. Oh my gosh, I love it, Valerie. And so is this what you do for the clients? If like a business comes to you, they're like, Valerie, help us. How can we stream? Yeah. How can we get involved? Do you help create stacks for them, MarTech stacks? Um, yes. Well, and kind of what just happens organically is our team already has our toolkit built out. Um, and then we uh, evaluate what the goals and objectives are and kind of figure out which ones we're going to go with. But automation has been a big part of our goals and objectives. Um, last year, we started just kind of paving um, a blueprint out about what we were going to focus on. So we onboarded about 80% of our clients on Zoho. So we wanted to automate the sales and marketing. Now we looked at, all right, what are our agency's goals, objectives, and the clients? And it's it's lead generation because we're a performance driven agency. So how do we put more transparency? We get a CRM, you know, that can really fuel that and put that accountability on there. And so that's we've really focused on that. Um, and then through that, we've built out other solutions that support our our stack. But I don't necessarily get clients saying, hey, build me a fancy stack. Uh, but they assume that we're using these these solutions to help expedite our, our workload. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. And so much great insight. I think if someone's just new to getting things automated, uh, marketing technology in general, like this is a good just 101 class. And so we've got some awesome people in the audience. So I want to give some shout outs. We've got Jim Fuse in the house, um, Deb Mitchell, our community manager, who is so awesome. Danny Monzon is in the house as well. Jen Cole, happy Tuesday to you too. Hope you're doing awesome. Um, we've just got a great group of people. And also we've got Janet Weinstock and Brian Fanzo said, I feel there are so many MarTech tools that they even have tools to help you identify the tools you need to use to manage the tools. To manage. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All the, yeah. He said tools so much in there. Um, but yeah, it is about right. Um, there's just so much and it can be overwhelming. Um, where can people educate themselves or where can businesses um, educate themselves on all the different tools um, and, and what they're used for? Are there resources or maybe you yeah. yourself have resources? Yeah, I mean, I certainly have a go-to list of tools that um, I can mention. I kind of um, just incorporate them into the discussion that we just had, but um, what, because there's 8,000 solutions in the marketplace, there's no reason for you to try to sift through all 8,000 unless you really want to. Uh, so you really need to think about what are your business goals and objectives. And for us, it because we're performance driven, we're looking for MarTech tools that are, are going to amplify our performance, our lead generation, um, and automate our data and reporting. So our our goals are pretty straightforward, but you know every business has different goals. If you haven't quite figured out what the overarching picture is, maybe just look at all right. Ask your team, where are you spending a lot of time? And, you know, they'll they'll tell you. And there's probably a MarTech tool out there that could help them automate their job. There's always this kind of um, lag time where you have to actually set up and do a little bit of customization. Um, but once you get through that, you can start reaping the rewards of, of having more automation at your disposal. So, I mentioned some tools earlier. Um, here are some that that I love. Um, Sprout Social is great. We're also using Zoho Social for our scheduling and automation. Um, we use SEM Rush to look at analysis across competitors and paid search and organic SEO. I think that tool is so amazing and. If you're trying to figure out how to get better insights and have a benchmark to create your your um, Google ads or your SEO, that's a great tool to use and continue to use it. Um, Kloop is a great mobile advertising tool. Ad Espresso was one I mentioned. Um, AREFs is a great tool when we look at technical SEO. So if you, again, you could kind of look at 
where are we spending time and where are some of our pet projects? So if your pet project is, man, I really want to get my website search engine optimized and that is all I want to focus on, then these tools like Ahrefs and SEMrush would be really fantastic. Google Analytics is great. Google Data Studio is also great. Um, it does take someone with some expertise to set up um, just the customization and data, uh, the Google Data Studio. Um, so those are some really great ones to kind of look at. Um, I am going to give a shout out to Quilk, and that's Q-L-I-K. Um, a friend of mine is over there, and he mentioned that they're offering a free data health assessment where they'll actually take all your data. Um, could be any type of data. It could be marketing, sales, financial, maybe something from your manufacturing plant. And then they'll look at it all together and give you a health score and also interpret your data. So if you have um, data from multiple sources, you could, you know, you could still do this or you could isolate and look at this. So that's a tool um, that you could look at. HubSpot's great. MailChimp is great. Um, Marketo is kind of a standard one that's out there. Um, we also have a tool that we use and love called Content Row. And so Content Row helps you analyze your blog headlines. And with a lot of the algorithm changes, the blog headlines are really important. So this kind of gives you some suggestions and things that are trending and how to incorporate that. But, you know, again, I, I just go back to what are the goals are what are the areas that you want to automate and save time? And then um, if you have any pet projects, just you know, just go out there. A lot of these will give you a free trial um, for maybe a 30-day period or a seven-day period. So it'll give you a sense of what it's like um, to use them. But those are some of my favorites. Oh, I love that. No, and those are, I think all of those any business, any company can benefit from. Um, and, and there's just even with what's going on right now, a lot of companies are having to focus on different areas or streamline different things because this is a very tricky time, mm -hmm. you know, with with just the current environment. We don't know what the future holds. Um, and so I think a lot of businesses are figuring out, OK, how can we streamline this to focus on more of this? So I, I love that. And Valerie, all of those are such great suggestions. And I would love to know. Um, what is automating your data and reporting important? And what are the common mistakes that you see yeah. businesses make um, when they use these kinds of tools? Well, um, we do some strategy sessions with business owners and they're doing a lot of different types of marketing tactics, but they didn't necessarily put the infrastructure in to analyze the performance of the programs. And I think that is so important. Anytime you do anything with marketing, what are you hoping to get out of it? And always make sure that you have benchmarks and the benchmark data for engagements or impressions and click-through rates, all of that stuff is widely published. Uh, you can source it from Google. Uh, Neil Patel has great data. Kiss Metrics has great data. But a lot of these, um, imp a lot of these benchmarks are already out there. And then you can just source a general benchmark, say for Facebook um, or Google Ads, or you can even try to find some <laughs> vertical specific um, benchmark reports. But before you do anything, have the benchmarks so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. And so that's a step that I see clients missing is they they are just like, well, I have all these numbers, but I, I don't really know what they mean or how to interpret them. And so the benchmarking data is a great place to start. Um, something else that we see a lot and you would just say, well, how is that possible? But <laughs> the, the contact forms on the website sometimes are broken or they're not getting to the right people or they're working for a while and then an IT email system kind of blocks them from getting any further updates. So that is so important because if you're going to get good data, you need to make sure they're actually getting your leads to even analyze the data and the performance. So just doing a basic technical audit 
um, to make sure the forms are working, they're going to the right people, they're automated in the system and either going right into Zoho and then Zoho sends out the, the lead to the designated sales contact. So all of those things need, need to definitely happen. Um, but I also see some things with Google Analytics, with um, tagging not being set up correctly, or maybe the Facebook pixel wasn't installed correctly. Um, something else that happens is there's generic phone numbers used for Google ads. And I, I always encourage our clients to use a, a tracking phone number um, or at least some number that we can just associate with the advertising performance. So these, these are, they sound pretty basic, but if you can't get past benchmarking and do the, the technical audit and have all the tracking and reporting automated, you can't even get to the analysis stage. And so when we talk about analysis, um, again, we're talking about the benchmark performance, the cost per lead, the co you know, maybe it's a new contact. Um, and then we look at, well, were these leads good? And so we have a lot of conversations each week with clients and we say, okay, here's all the leads that came in. Let's talk about these leads. Um, were they a high quality lead? Cause yeah, we're the marketing team and we're like, Hey, we got you all these leads this week, but if they're not qualified leads, then we're not doing our job. So those types of conversations do happen. And um, when we see, maybe we see some stuff that's not hitting benchmarks. So we talk about, well, what could we do to A-B test to try and prove it? Um, most of the time, it's just, again, going into the data and doing some sort of segmentation so that the, the content that's being delivered to that audience is exactly what they want. Um, so th those are some like important but big uh, takeaways when we start looking at all these things and just just some very basic mistakes that end up coming up and when we're doing our review. And I, I think all that is so important. Um, Deb Mitchell, our community manager, was just kind of reiterating what you said. Benchmarks are so important. Um, and we've got Stephanie Liu in the house. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I love that you said, is your contact form on your website working? <laughs> people, people don't realize, and it's some basic things, and you may be missing out on so much valuable information uh, mm -hmm. if it's that's not working. So you just got to trying to check the basic technical things, you know, pre pretend to be your um, someone that doesn't work at your company or even have a friend kind of maneuver through things just to see how they experience it and what they like. Yeah. I mean, I, we had a client that recently said, we've never received a lead through our website. Well, the forms weren't working. So that's <laughs> kind of what happened there. And, you know, you laugh about it, but I mean, this is real life. This, <laughs> this stuff actually does happen. Yeah. And, and so that's one of those things. If you haven't done that yet or in a while or since your website was made, just do a quick like 10 minute, just look into things and see if you're getting good, accurate, clean data, if everything's working OK, because that's one of the smartest things to do. And you should probably do that quarterly, if not, maybe monthly just to, to yeah. see. Yeah. You just never know. And Stephanie Lou said, also check to make sure that completed contact form requests aren't ending up in your spam folder. This is also very true, guys. Um, so there's a lot of, once you get things working, it's not just, you know, MarTech tool. It's not just one and done. Um, you got to make sure the whole process flows and is working correctly. So I love that. And Valerie, so we're almost out of time and I can't believe that. And so really quick, um, what advice or, you know, kind of, positive sentiment do you have for, you know, anybody that may be struggling right now or company as we kind of take on the second half of 2020 by storm? Yeah. Uh, good question. Last week we did a webinar on innovation uh, during uncertain times. Uh, we've done that topic a, a couple of times and it's popular. And so it, it's, it's easy to get discouraged right now, but this is actually the perfect time to be innovating. So if you can shift your focus to, hey, I can't control everything that's happening around me, but I can control how much I innovate during this time. And look at this as an opportunity to go back through your business and say, um, hey, could we pick up market share here if we fix this technical glitch? Or um, 
should we go ahead and roll out a new product right now because people are more engaged in front of social media and maybe solicit feedback and do um, some quality control. Um, it's also a great time just to think about what types of new technology you could bring to your business or how your product and service could innovate the marketplace as consumer buying trends have changed so much during this time. But I feel that if we can change the conversation from I, I feel out of control and powerless to, hey, I am a, a creator, I am an inventor, and this is the perfect time to do that. And while there's been a lot of small businesses that have gone out of business, um, my sense is there's going to be also a lot of new startups that come out of this pandemic. And though, so that's some of the positive news. Other things, just stay away from news. If it upsets you, just stay away from it. Stay away from negative people um, and really focus on um, setting some positive intentions for yourself and your business each day and just try to come back to what you can control and, and what you can invent or create during this time. I, that's perfect advice. And Valerie, something um, about me. So I had been like in this kind of tunnel of watching the news and being like, the world is ending. Like if you just watch the news every single day, you, you would think that, but then you like get outside and if it, you're just smart, you're safe, but it, it's not like that. There is a lot of opportunity out there right now. I know there's devastating things going on, but there still is are ways to innovate and there is opportunity. So I love all of that. I think that's so fantastic. Um, and we are out of time, which I can't believe. So Valerie, where can people find you, follow you, hire you, all that amazing good stuff? <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so they can definitely find me there. Um, my Instagram is kind of a mashup of personal family and business. So it's a little bit more social. I'm on Facebook um, and we have all of our company channels on Instagram, LinkedIn. So pretty much everywhere they can find us. <laughs> um, and I am, I am always open uh, to having conversations with people that are exploring um, this new world of MarTech. So they can also reach out to me through email. So. Awesome. Oh my gosh, Valerie, seriously, thank you so much because I know you're so busy. And there's so much going on. So thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with us and educate our community. Uh, it's truly priceless. So we really appreciate it. And we thank all of you who are watching us for, you know, just being intrigued and commenting and asking your questions as well. And we're excited for the rest of our week. We've got Troy Sandage on Social Media Lab Live tomorrow. That's 12 o'clock Eastern. We have Jim Fuse on our Twitter, our uh, agency chat, hashtag agency chat. You can look at all the prior chats if you want. That's Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We are off this Friday. It's actually my daughter's third birthday, so I'm taking it off to take her horseback riding. So there's no Social Pulse Weekly on Friday, but we'll, we will return next Friday with Julia McCoy at two o'clock Eastern as well. And with that said, we have an amazing event coming up. August 26th, save the date. It's our Social Pulse Summit. It's an incredible all-day event. We're going to have live keynotes, live Q&As, amazing sessions, and so much more. You don't want to miss it. You actually probably want to clear your entire calendar so you can just focus in and learn as much as possible. But thank you guys so much again. Make your Tuesday and the rest of your week amazing, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.